Golden State Media Concepts Fantasy Football Podcast is your one-stop shop for fantasy football news and advice. Can't decide on who to draft on the first round? Going gaga on how to line up your team. Got you covered. Traditional leagues, dynasty leagues, PPR leagues, IDP leagues, IDP leagues, even daily fantasy football leagues. Join us as we break down all the questions of fantasy football. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Fantasy Football Podcast. Welcome and thank you for tuning in to the GSMC Fantasy Football Podcast brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I am your host, Emmett Wyman, back at it at 8.17 Tuesday afternoon. Um, we just encountered the second day of pads in training camp for these players. So basically, a lot of injuries have happened. A lot of injuries. And just now, Breaking news, as I'm reading this headline come up across my phone, the Dallas Cowboys have officially waived Gerald McCoy due to injury. So basically he had an injury clause in his contract stating that, hey, if you get hurt, you know, we see a degenerate condition in your knee and your quad. He got hurt in his quad. Cowboys said, sorry, but we got to move on. And that's just a tough part of this NFL business, man, is that these teams don't care. If they can save money, they can save money. So Gerald McCoy being the person he is, uh, that's going to be really hard on, you know, that locker room. I know that for a fact. And just everyone seeing, was really, really encouraged seeing him early on. I could tell you that. Just being a Cowboys fan, reading the reports, the players really enjoyed his company. So, yeah, it's, just, it's really bad. I mean, I, I feel bad for him. But, you know, this is something I explained in the previous podcast, ladies and gentlemen. Injuries are going to happen, period, all right? And it's not going to be one or two. It's going to be a lot. So what does this mean for you fantasy football players? Emphasize depth, okay? You think the Cowboys are sitting there in real life going, oh, season's over, we don't have Gerald McCoy? No, I bet you they don't care. I bet you deep down inside they really don't care because they just move on to the next guy. And that's the same thing for fantasy football. You're not going to care if a guy gets hurt. You're, you're probably going to be frustrated and upset because he could be a good player. But at the end of the day, you're not going to care. You're just ready for the next guy. It's the same mentality. So whoever that next guy is, he better be doing a job that's similar to the first team guy. Even though you can't do it completely, that's why you're on the second team. Still, you better have somebody ready to go at all the positions. Tight end, quarterback, receiver, and running back running back, the most important position, which we'll be getting into later on my top 10. I'm going to break down my top 10 running backs in the final segment. Um, before we get into, I want to talk, you know, we're going to really hammer out this draft prep, guys. All right, these next three episodes at least, I want to just hammer the draft prep, hammer, hammer, I mean, because that's what we're in right now. Everybody's doing drafts from now until the end of the month. Everybody's doing drafts. So, I mean, I'll give you an example. Uh, last night, I did a mock draft that we're going to get into in the second, in the later segment. We're going to get into my mock draft. And in that mock draft, um, I was in the ESPN lobby trying to get the room for my specific league. Basically, they have auction mock drafts, standard mock drafts. Most of you that have been there, you understand. But I was waiting to get in a PPR 12 team. For over 20 minutes because there's so many people and they're practicing their drafts and there's probably people in your leagues that are practicing guys. So if you're not practicing and other people are, that means you ain't going to win this year because you're not putting in the work. All right. You got to put in the work to be successful in anything you do, not just fantasy. All right. And believe me, there's more important things to do in fantasy. But if you got money on the line or even just the fame of rubbing it in your friend's face, which is my favorite part when you win your league, 
hey, prepare, study, research, and it'll come to you. Because hard work will pay off. That you can take to the bank. But let's just go around the league real quick, see if we can uh, notify any significant injuries. I mean, most of these injuries um, are on defense. I've touched on Gerald McCoy for the Dallas Cowboys. He's going to be out for the entire season. Just a total heartbreak for you know the entire Cowboys organization. But we'll go by team here. Uh, Robert Alford for the Cardinals. He's a veteran corner. Uh, it says he's going to sit out after a torn pectoral, which means he'll be out for the entire year. Blow for that Cardinals defense. Uh, Baltimore Ravens, Jacob Breland, veteran tight end. He's going to be out for a significant amount of time. Uh, non-football related, the injury says. Uh, Buffalo Bills, John Feliciano, guard. Uh, it says on the 31st, he suffered a chest injury. It's going to require surgery. He'll be back in October. Thomas Sweeney, the tight end. Uh, he's a backup. He'll be on the pup list, it's stated. Uh, for Carolina Panthers, they have Mike Pilardi, the punter. Uh, he's hurt. I mean, most leagues uh, I know don't have punters, but if you do, that's just something to note. Uh, Chicago Bears. Uh, we talked, guys, I talked about the Chicago Bears defense. It is not the defense of 85 or even two years ago with Khalil Mack when he first just got, it's just not, it's not the same anymore, guys. And they had another big blow when they lost Artie Burns corner. He was a first round pick by the Steelers out of Miami, uh, at least five years ago. Steve was up and down. Steelers decided to move on and get uh, Minka Fitzpatrick. So they let him go. Uh, the Bears picked him up, and he tore his ACL uh, today in practice. So that stinks for him. He'll be out for the entire year. Cincinnati Bengals, they also have another injury. Their corner, Trey Waynes, uh, he's going to be out for the entire – It's uh, not the entire year, but you'd expect. He has a torn pectoral. Torn pectoral, usually you don't come back from. Uh, and then a couple injuries to their – Reserve list, Alex Redman and Khalid Kareem. Uh, Cleveland Browns, they have Andrew Billings. He's a defensive tackle drafted by Cincy a while ago. He's pretty much on the downside of his career. He's been hurt too much. Uh, Denver Broncos, Austin Fort. Uh, he's going to be out for four to eight weeks. It says he's not a significant um, fantasy player. Dallas Cowboys, they don't have anybody besides McCoy. Detroit Lions, they have uh, Jerron Curse. He's a backup safety. He'll be on the reserve list. And then Austin Bryant, who is, I think, a high draft pick for them, he'll start the year on PUP. So six weeks out the gate. Detroit Lions defense is, ugh. I mean, Matt Patricia, your job's on the line this year, and you got to go out with that defense. I mean, that is not good. You better hope Stafford stays healthy. Uh, Green Bay Packers, Hunter Bradley, Simon Stepniak, Curtis Bolton, Patrick Taylor, and Yash Nijman, I think is his name. Basically, they're all reserves, but um, they have some significant injuries. They'll be out for at least the start of the season. Uh, Texans, Duke Ejiofor, out for a significant amount of time. Reserve linebacker. Uh, Indianapolis Colts, they had Kimiko Ture, who's a Rutgers boy. Uh, I don't know if many of you East Coast, you know Rutgers, but... He was drafted in the second round by them. He says he'll start the year on pup with an ankle injury. Get well for him. Uh, Jacksonville Jaguars, they had a defensive end. Aaron Lynch, he retired the other day. And Caleb on Chase on their first round draft pick was hurt with a hamstring. He should be good for the season, though. Kansas City Chiefs, Juan Thornhill, safety, second round pick last year. He'll start the year on pup. Breland Speaks, starting defensive end. He'll be uh, on the injured reserve list. Doesn't specify the injury could be non-football related Vegas Raiders uh nobody significant just a bunch of corners on the reserve list Los Angeles Rams Ashawn Robinson defensive tackle they brought in from free agency basically a player the Lions drafted high and let go which means eh, he's kind of eh. uh Miami Dolphins Xavier Howard their top corner he's going to be out uh due to COVID he so he'll be back whenever his protocol is complete. Vince Beagle, same. Th- oh no, Vince Beagle has a torn Achilles, so he'll be out for the year. I think he's a starting linebacker for them. Preston Williams. Now, this is a fantasy player because if, uh, I don't know if you guys saw on the GSMC. Uh, please, guys, if you're listening to this podcast at this point, please stop and go follow GSMC underscore FF Football on Twitter. I believe that's the handle. Let me double check while I have my phone out, but. Go over there on Twitter, if you have Twitter, most of you do, GSMC underscore FF football. Yeah, that's it. Comes up, you go over there, and you're going to see two things. The podcast, number one, 
But number two, you're going to see my top 100 that I did with my good buddy EJ. Uh, he does a podcast as well about hockey and, uh, and fantasy as well. We're going to be doing one. But go over to Twitter. Check out that list because I had a lot of input on that list. And there's a lot of players that I've talked about in this podcast that are on that list in terms of sleepers. And Preston Williams was on that list very late. Uh, he has a knee injury, but he should be clear. In, a, in the week to return to football activities. Shouldn't impact him for the season, but still, this is a receiver that I think if he gets his, not only his health straight, because he had health problems last year, but just his relationship with Tua, because that's he's going to start whenever they want. If he gets his relationship with Tua good, he could be a big-time player. New England Patriots, uh, they had two running backs. Lamar Miller, he went down a while ago. He's on IR, or he's on a pup. Sonny Michelle also has a foot injury, so... They say he'll be ready for week one, but it's still undetermined, uh, as well as a couple other reserves. New Orleans Saints, Kiko Alonso. I mean, my God, he's been bouncing around ever since he left the Eagles. He's out for the knee injury. Uh, Giants, they have a reserve running back. Jets, receiver. Joe Flacco uh, is also hurt. Obviously not a fantasy quarterback. If he is, and you guys are crazy. Uh, Eagles, Alshon Jeffries. Now, this is a – I mean – when Alshon Jeffrey's name came up last podcast, I said, oh, my God, he's so slow, this and that. He had a foot injury, guys, so please don't draft him. All right, please don't draft Alshon Jeffrey. If you're an Eagles fan, please, please stray away. I know there's not, there's some Eagles fans on the West Coast, believe it or not, uh, besides EDP. Um, we won't get into EDP that much, though. He's a little too vulgar for this podcast. But uh, if you're Eagle fans out on the West Coast, please don't draft Alshon Jeffries. Please. All right, because he has the foot injury. He's already slow to begin with, so his season isn't looking good. I mean, the young guys better pull their bootstraps up and get ready to play. Uh, Brandon Brooks, their guard, you guys know that. He went out on IR a couple weeks ago. Now, 49ers, uh, they have a couple fantasy players that we got to pay attention to. Uh, Debo Samuel. Now, he's going to be out until they say he's going to be back week two, week three. I don't know. That's iffy because if they're saying he's not ready for the season, that means it's pretty significant. But today, today, they just had their third round pick who they were raving about last year, Jalen Hurd, who was a great high school player, five star recruit, went down with a torn ACL out for the year. Now, this is big, guys, because who's the sleeper that is going to dominate for this? Brandon Ayuk. All right. I haven't said his name much yet because I really want to keep his name low, but. Brandon Ayuk was someone that the 49ers absolutely raved about. Kyle Shanahan traded up in the first round to go nab this guy. And believe me, if he's, if Shanahan's trading up for you, he has a plan for you. And this kid is going to play early and often with these injuries. So this is someone you could easily nab in the 11th, 12th round. Nobody's going to know about him because he's a late round first, I mean, late first round pick for a team that's, he's a backup on at least to the general public. So if you can nab him in the 12th, 11th round, guys, be on the lookout because you might get a lot of production out of him because if he's starting a lot, usage rates, volume, targets, you get the point. So to finish up this list, uh, we'll move along here. 49ers don't really have anyone else significant. Just the two receivers. Uh, Seattle Seahawks, they lost corner DJ Reed to reserve along as a couple other reserves for the year. Uh, Rashad Penny is also out with the running back. I don't think anybody was going to take a chance on him. He has a knee injury, and then he also has, uh, says he has COVID. Or no, he has COVID. Um, he didn't do his COVID test, so he's got to do that before he comes back to practice, which is going to be a few days. Uh, Justin Evans, uh, I think it was a high draft pick by the Bucks. He's out for them. Got a foot injury. Tennessee Titans, they lost Vic Beasley for a little bit. Uh, says non-football related. Uh, and then Josh Smith, linebacker, on the COVID list. And Washington football team has Kelvin Harmon out. Uh, he was a high draft pick for them last year. They were really excited. He's going to be out for a significant amount of time uh, due to a knee injury. So big blow for the Washington football team and months other things stacking up against them. But those are really the injuries. And, guys, you know, I, I hate to be, you know, the injury reporter, but at the end of the day, the injuries are significant. And they're going to pile up. All right? It took me eight minutes to read that list. Watch when we get to week one. Because these guys are just getting started in pads. And they haven't played pads. They haven't put pads on since 2019. 
And we're about to go to 2021. Time's moving, guys. Time is moving. All right. So they haven't put pads on since 2019. What do you think is going to happen? They're going to get hurt. And they have to put the pads on eventually because season's around the corner. So there's no other way to try to train for an NFL season than not playing contact football. It's just the way it is. At least, I mean, maybe it's the old school way, but heck, I think it's the only way. Because you can do all the running around and this and that, but when push comes to shove, it's a man's game. you got to hit. So these injuries are going to stack up, and you better be prepared. But as far as that, guys, I think that's all the news around the NFL. Hard Knocks Episode 2 coming out tonight, just to note. So be on the lookout for that. Uh, we'll give that. We'll give the review on Hard Knocks on the next podcast, which will be out on Sunday. Check that out. But uh, we're going to take a break, and then we're going to get into mock draft. I did a mock draft where I did a couple concepts and rules I'll get into later. But stick around. Top 10 running backs today, guys. My favorite position to evaluate. You're going to want to hear this. So stick around. Are you looking for the very best NFL and college football podcast? Then check out the GSMC Football Podcast. Get the latest football news both on and off the field. From the NFL draft to trades to the rumor mill to the NFL combines. They got you covered. That's gsmcpodcast.com backslash football dash podcast. Get updates on college rivalries, game day insights, and much, much more. It's football talk the way you want it. This show eats, sleeps, and breathes football. Don't forget to like them on Facebook and follow them on Twitter. Visit gsmcpodcast.com for more info. back here on the GSMC Fantasy Football Podcast. We just went over some news and injuries around the league. Before we get into the mock draft, please, please stick around for the running back rankings in the final segment. Also, next segment, we'll talk about how to attack your draft if you're in the top or bottom of a snake. So either you're picking one or you're picking 12 or 10, whatever the bottom of your snake is. I'm going to show you how to attack it and why it's not the worst thing in the world. It's pretty much the same thing. It's just you have to go about it a slightly different way than everybody else. But before we do that, let's get into my mock draft that I did yesterday. So after waiting about 20 minutes, I'd say, around the ESPN lobby, uh, finally got in for a mock draft and said, look, why don't we play a game with this mock draft? I'm going to try to do an all-running back team, meaning... I'm going to wait as long as possible to draft a receiver just to see if I can get any good receivers. And I mean, not like wait till round four. I'm like wait till round seven. All right. So we could pull slightly decent receivers in round seven. That means you could wait on a receiver. That's pretty much the whole point of this exercise. So. Uh, not, rather than, you know, say every single pick, because we'd be on here for the next hour, uh, I'm just going to say the best, uh, the three best players available at the time of my pick. So I did the, I did a 10th overall selection in a 12 man snake, uh, cause that's a pick I have for an upcoming draft I'm doing this week. So I decided, hey, let's give it a little practice. Um, so the best players available with the 10th pick were Miles Sanders, Julio Jones, and Kenyon Drake. And I decided to select Kenyon Drake. The reason I did is because, look, Drake, all he needs is the rock fit. I mean, and when you look at his numbers from the second half of the year on, the man will produce. And it's just a matter of injuries and a little bit of consistency, but 
Man, I am so excited for him this year. I'm probably higher on him than I should be just due to the fact that he has some inconsistencies in the past and he really hasn't ever been the man anywhere he's gone, but he's had a lot of talent in front of him. He had Lamar Miller in front of him when he went to the Dolphins. He had, um, God, this plethora of running backs at Alabama where he never even got a rep. Uh, so it's been an uphill battle for Drake, but I think this is this could be the year that he really shines fantasy-wise. I would not be shocked if he gets 1,500 all-purpose with at least 10 touchdowns. And to me, that's worthy of a late first round pick. So then we're going to move around to the second round, top of the snake with the third pick of that round. Uh, the best players available. Again, I'm trying to wait on a receiver. So I had Chris Godwin. I had the, uh, Devontae Adams was actually going to be the pick if he was there, but he didn't last. Uh, Cause then I would just have to, that would be stealing, but Devontae should be a first round pick. So Godwin was there. Uh, Joe Mixon was there, but I decided to go with Travis Kelsey. (laughs) And I really don't like picking tight ends early, but I looked at it from this perspective. So I don't really want to take a chance on Godwin this high, right? Joe Mixon, yes, I like him. Yes, I think he's going to be a good player, but I just picked Kenyon Drake. So why not lock up the best tight end in fantasy football? I'm not going to be on the clock for a while, so why don't I have pick this advantage while everybody else is going to be scrambling for other shit, for other running backs and receivers, right? Go contrarian. So pick Travis Kelsey and waited. So a lot of picks went by. A lot of receivers came off the board, which I expected, and I was back on the clock, third round, around the thirty-something pick, basically third round, tenth pick in the round. And the best players on the board at the time were Mike, no, it was Adam Thielen, George Kittle. I crossed him out because I'd already picked a tight end. And I decided to go with Le'Veon Bell. Le'Veon Bell was on the board, and that's just too good for me to pass up. If he's there in the third round, guys, take him. The talent's too good. I think the Jets are going to be, I mean, God, they were so bad on offense last year that anything could be better than last year, and I think they'll improve. They invested a little bit in the O-line. They picked McCod Becton, like I mentioned last podcast. And if Darnold could stay healthy, it'll take some pressure off his hands. And it should, should at least return him to the 13, 1400 all-purpose that he averaged with Pittsburgh. I'm not going to say he's due to the numbers that he was doing five years ago, but still, he should have a bounce back year. Uh, that's why he was on the list last time. So five picks later. Uh, the best players on available were, I think George Kittle was still there, or he might have gotten picked, so it could have been Ertz. Uh, the best receiver on the board was, I believe, Robert. I mean, it was either Cooper Cup or Robert Woods. Didn't matter. I mean, everyone else was gone. Or no, actually, it was Odell. <laughs> Odell was sitting there, and you know me with Odell, so we could pass on that. And I just decided, heck. So let's take another running back. Let's take a starting running back. So I went and got James Conner in the fourth round. And the reason James Conner's slipping is because you look at the Steelers. They drafted Benny Snell last year, who was getting good burn and doing well with his reps. They got Jalen Samuels, who they're still trying to work in, even though I don't think he's very good. And they just picked up Anthony McFarlane in this year's draft. And I guarantee you, once they see his speed, they're definitely going to want to work him in to their offense. So... It's a lot of mouse to feed in that backfield. And, man, with Connor's injury history, I can totally understand why you don't put a top 30 pick in him. But I think outside of round three or four, I mean, I was I picked him early four. So outside of round three, if he's still there in a 12-team, I think you got to take him. So go with the robust running back strategy, guys. Stack up your running backs. Three of the first four picks, running backs. And that should be you for every league. Make Make a note of that, guys. Three of your first four draft picks should be running back. That's how you that's how you build your team. That one pick could be a receiver or a tight end. It doesn't really matter. Probably should be a receiver. Okay. Because the receivers I ended up with are really not the guys you want to roll out there, but I mean with trades you could probably improve it very quickly. Just to be safe, I would pick a receiver early. Just to be safe. So we went with that and Skipped on down, a lot of receivers, tight, a couple tight ends came off the board, uh, and a handful of running backs. So, like, Eckular came off, Josh Jacobs came off, Mixon, Jones, all those cats, and I think even Gurley came off the board. 
So we wound down to pick 10 in the fifth round. The best players available were, uh, I could pick Dak or Deshaun, but I didn't want to pick a quarterback. Receiver again, I'm trying to, I'm still trying to wait just to see if I can get anybody. The best receivers were Landry, Ridley, and I think Sutton was there. Um, and then Darren Waller was still on the board, but I, again, I already picked Kelsey. So heck, get another running back. David Montgomery was my best running back available at the time. And I said, heck, David's a starter. I know they got Tariq Cohen, but I think he's more receiving. I don't think he's going to cut into David's basically north to south carries that he gets in that offense. I know that line was bad. I think they'll be a little bit better this year. Just <laughs> you'd hope they'd be a little bit better. I mean, Mitch is really not, he's not relieving any pressure off of him. So I think that's why teams are really stacking the box. But man, I mean, he is a great player. I loved his college tape. If they find a way to get him going, he can definitely be an impact and a productive fantasy player. You saw that last year. I thought last year would be the year, but I think it might be this year for Montgomery. So I decided to pick him up five picks later. RB, robust RB strategy. Uh, actually, now that I think about it, I remember this guy I was supposed to pick here, but I said, okay, I can get him five picks from now. I know I can get him because he wasn't even on the consensus board. In terms of like the top 10, you had to scroll down and see his name. So people aren't going to be looking at that. They're looking at, guys, people are looking at who's on the screen. They're just going to pick a name. At least 50% of the people are just sitting there. They don't have time for that. So they're just going to be looking. And I knew, okay, I can get this guy five picks. So why not just take David Montgomery now, lock him up, because I know he's a starting running back. He'll go sooner rather than later. And then we locked up Raheem Mostert with the sixth round, third pick in the draft. Uh, Raheem Mustard, a guy who I'm really high on for standard. For PPR, he's a guy I'd nap in the 6th, 7th round if he's still there. But standard, I'd make sure you lock this guy up because he is the number one running back for the 49ers. And last time I checked, weren't the 49ers the number one rushing offense in the league last year, guys? Last time I checked, didn't the 49ers just trade for Pro Bowl left tackle Trent Williams? You might want to have that guy on your team, guys. I know they go committee. Mostert was the best out of the committee last year. They just didn't use them consistently. But when the big big lights were on, playoff game, they used Mostert. So make sure you lock him up in standard if you're in playing standard leagues. So six picks are in, and we didn't pick a receiver. Didn't pick a quarterback either. It wasn't really worth it. There were still quarterbacks like Breeze, Roethlisberger, Stafford on the board. So it wasn't bad options. So you could really wait on the quarterback. But... The two receivers, actually, let's let's recap the six. So we went, the team to this point is Kenyon Drake, RB1, Le'Veon Bell, RB2, Travis Kelsey, your starting tight end, James Conner in the flex, and then you have Montgomery and Mostert on the bench. So the first receiver I locked up in the seventh round, 10th, which is basically 70-something overall, was Will Fuller. And Will Fuller is just a prospect that, man, when he is on, he is lethal. I mean, he had games last year that got him claimed off the waiver wire immediately just because it's like, whoa. I mean, this guy is way too appealing to the eye. And, man, if, if now with Hopkins gone, if he's the starter in that offense and he has to stay healthy, that's the thing. When he's healthy, that Texans offense is different. He just brings a certain juice to it that it's undescribable. I mean, I can understand why they like him so much, just because even when he's healthy, he brings a whole new element that they can't find anywhere else. So, is he a great receiver as your one? No. You want this guy as your three. But, if I had to roll the dice with him, would I? Yeah, I would. Wide receiver two, eighth, eighth round. So, this is like, now we're in the 80s, guys. We picked up Jamison Crowder, who's the wide receiver one on the New York Jets. I know it's the Jets, but he's a starting receiver on the New York Jets who almost had a 1,000 yards last year, okay? And he had Luke Falk throwing him the football for three games. And I I bet a good amount of money I could do a better job at quarterback than Luke Falk. So I know he doesn't get in the end zone. I said that before, but the fact that you got 2,000-yard receivers in the seventh and eighth round really hammers my point home, guys. All right, and this all comes back to the first principle on my fantasy football 10 principles that I said in my very first podcast 
please go back and listen if you don't. Stack your running backs. All right, and and really the most important, if you don't want to stack your running backs like me, I totally get that, guys. You don't need five running backs in your first six weeks. It's I, that's unnecessary. That's me because I'm obsessed with running backs. All right, I understand how important they are. But if you lock up three running backs in your first four picks, like I said earlier, you'll be fine. You'll be fine. Make sure you, you get the fourth running back later, like a, a monster. Damian Harris is a sleeper. I don't want to talk about him too well because people might start drafting him. So keep a load on those guys. But, man, the fact that you can get receivers that late shows that you could definitely – definitely find good receivers in round five round six there's guys out there last year chris godwin was a 1213 yard receiver he was like a fifth round adp 48 49 overall so there's guys out there you just have to find them all right running backs are scarce but if you tried to if we did this exercise maybe i'll do it in a different podcast but if we did an exercise where we try to go to the receiver out we'd be picking running backs like god uh melvin gordon uh, Adrian Peterson, I mean, come on. That's, that's, <laughs> that ain't going to win you crap. And I'm telling you this right now. Here's another trick. When it comes to fantasy football trading, people aren't going to trade running backs for receivers. They're just not. All right? It's hard to replace running backs, and it's way easier to replace receivers. But anyway, that was the mock draft, and that was the whole exercise. I had a lot of fun doing that. Uh, to wrap up the segment... Please, guys, once you find out your draft day, I said this last podcast, but I'm going to reiterate it. Once you find out the day of your draft, you'll find out your draft pick. Okay. Once you get your draft pick, go to ESPN and mock your draft. Have your draft board up. Last podcast, we talked about how to build the horizontal and vertical board. If you're still building the board, that's fine. Play around with it. See where guys are going to go. See which guys, because... If you have your personal rankings compared to your ESPN and you mock your draft is like 10,000 times, you're going to figure out what your team's going to be. And I know that sounds crazy to say, but there's going to be guys that you pick that you have higher than the consensus that when you consistently mock them to your team, probably means there's a good shot it's going to happen in the real draft. So an example for me last year was Derrick Henry. I was high on Derrick Henry contract year I mean finally an RB1 that was clear cut I knew they were just going to feed him the rock and my god was I right about that I mean he was a top 20 player for me and I think in the fantasy rankings he was like a 30 something he's still a high but he wasn't as high as he should have been but man he was outstanding last year he was outstanding so he was a player that I was mocking I kept getting Derrick Henry as my RB1 RB2 RB I'm like damn there's a good chance I'm gonna I'm gonna get Derrick Henry. <laughs> There's a pretty dang good chance I'm gonna get Derrick Henry on my team. And what do you know? Second pick in my real draft, boom, Derrick Henry gets drafted onto my team and he was a great addition. So there's there's going to be ways that you could really predict what your team's going to look like if you consistently mock a draft. Because I said this and I'm going to say it again, most people in your league are using the consensus board. And the consensus consensus board is basically last year's rankings. That's not good. You got to project what this year is going to be. So just some more draft prep, guys. Stick around. We're going to get into not only the running backs, but we're going to get into how to attack the top and bottom of the snake in your mock tra- in your real draft. Excuse me. But stick around for later because we're going to get into the top 10 running backs and where these guys should go. So you can continue to build your horizontal board. But let's take a break. We'll get into how to attack the top of the snake next. Check out the show that's built on the MMA. From the UFC to extreme cage fighting, they got the fights covered. Check out the GSMC MMA podcast. Get the latest news on past or upcoming fights. Join us as we talk to and about some of the biggest names in the MMA, past, present, and future. When it's the fight game, there's just one show to check out. GSMCpodcast.com backslash MMA dash podcast. Don't forget to like them on Facebook and follow them on Twitter. Visit G. SMCpodcast.com for more info.
Back here on the GSMC Fantasy Football Podcast, just went over the mock draft I recently did, where we don't really draft a receiver early. And to be honest with you, this rule is going to apply to the next segment we're going to do, and that's how to attack a snake from the top and bottom. So to break it down into layman's terms, the snake is basically the draft order. So 1 through 12 means it goes pick 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, right? Then the person who has the 12th pick will have the first pick of the next round. And then it will go 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. So that's the snake. That's why you call it a snake because it slithers back and forth. And it will eventually come right back your order. But it might take a while if you're at one end of the snake and not at the other rather than being in the middle. Now for me, if I had to pick, I like being late. In the middle, but I like being a little bit later because I like having that pick right away in the back-to-back because I can easily project who's going to be there. I mean, it's only going to be two picks in between. If you know the team, you'll know who they like. So you can say, all right, you pick him, he'll pick him. That means I might be able to snag him this round. Let's get this guy. And it's a very easy way to just project the draft. But when you're at the top of the snake, a lot of people – don't like it. <laughs> and I might as well tell the story. I promise I'll tell you that guys the story. So last year, uh, my friend in my money league had the first pick. And he texted the group chat. He said, I don't want the first pick. I've had it two years in a row. I'm sick of it. Blah, blah, blah. If you guys want to trade me or trade a pick, I'll do it. I don't like my draft order. So I go, okay, uh, I'll take those picks. And he goes, what pick are you? I'm like, you want the fourth pick? He's like, hey, yeah, I want the fourth pick. Yeah, definitely. So I go, here, I'll give you the fourth pick in the draft. <laughs> I can't believe I'm going to say this. I said, I'll give you the fourth pick in the draft. You give me pick 20, which is his second, pick 21, his third, pick 20, uh, 40, which is his f- fourth, and pick 41, which is his fifth. So I offered him my first round pick for his second, third, fourth, and fifth round pick. And he accepted the trade. <laughs> I don't know why he did it. I don't know what, what, I mean, I was like practically joking when I first sent him the offer. And then once I saw he was interested, I go, wow, I could really steal one here. And I think ever since that trade, he he's had a really big disdain for me in terms of fantasy. He doesn't want to trade with me at all. I've basically never, I've ruined it to the point where he does he'll never trade with me again. Uh, people in the league aren't going to want to trade with me either because they think I'm up to something. And you know, knowing me, you're probably right. But that was just unbelievable. The kind of value. So basically, what I traded him player wise to put it in perspective. He used that fourth pick on Alvin Kamara because he's a Saints fan. And I used that pick 20 on Derrick Henry. I used pick 21 on, I believe, I think I used it on Galladay. So I got, I mean, that alone. Galladay and Derrick Henry for Alvin Kamara is absolute stealing. But I got Galladay, uh Derrick Henry, 40, I picked up Aaron Jones. <laughs> so I got the best two running backs in fantasy last year, Galladay, and I think I used the 41st on Tyler Lockett, I want to say. So, my God, what a steal. It honestly took me from a mediocre team to one of the best teams in the league. Uh, ended up getting third place, lost on some bad luck, but hey, I mean, that team was absolutely disgusting. It was rolling. So... What a robbery. Uh, just like Jimmy Johnson said, the great train robbery, that's what it does. Um, unfortunately, I didn't get the Super Bowl. That's what I'm up to this year. I'll get that ring. So let's break it down. So first of all, if you have the number one pick, don't do what he did. Don't go trading draft picks. All right? I know some leagues you can trade draft picks. Honestly, I, I don't think that should be a thing in this just because fantasy, you can't really maneuver on the clock. You have to pick your player with only a minute on the clock. Still, it's really complicated to – just pull off trades while you're in the middle of trying to look through your rankings or you're looking at your list or whatever. It's only a minute on the clock. It's not enough time to really do trades. Like in the real NFL where there's 10 minutes on the clock, you could chit chat, maneuver, call up other general managers and joke for a bit. So stuff like that. But if you have the first pick in the draft, please don't use it on a receiver. All right. 
there really isn't a wrong player to draft aside for if you're really reaching. Like if you drive Clyde number one, you're stupid. Um, don't do that. So if you have the number one pick, I'm just going to tell you like this. The safe pick is Christian McCaffrey. All right, considering what he did last year, he was the best running back in fantasy, and he's the safe pick because you'd assume he's going to get similar to those numbers. Not the, not, I don't know about the exact same numbers. I mean, those, those were ridiculous what he was doing. He was doing ridiculous numbers, but hey, he's going to he's going to ball, and he's got a lot of help this year. So I don't know if it's going to be perfect, but he'll definitely be a lot better to say the least. Now, the, the player that, if you're going to go there and you're going to go, what am, what am I going to get in terms of the most upside? I'd probably look at Saquon, as much as it kills me to say that. But with Jason Garrett and that offense, all he's going to want to do is run the football. I know it. I know it. I see it. I hear it. <laughs> like, I'm telling you right now, all the Clapper wants to do is run the football. And Saquon is just going to get fed 20 times a game, 25 times a game. I wouldn't be surprised if he has 28 and 30 carries a game this year. Just because he is going to absolutely eat on an offense that has nothing but a couple first-round picks on the O-line, Daniel Jones, and some old receivers, and Evan Ingram, who can't stay healthy. So, to me, I had to scream Saquon all day. I think he'll easily have the best year. He has a lot to prove. You know, going into a contract year, essentially, because this will be the end of his third year. He can negotiate just like Zeke did. So this is a big year for him. He wants to prove it under a new coaching staff, especially after getting hurt last year. So, hey, if you're Saquon, I think <laughs> go out there and ball, dude. But if you're looking for the safe pick, the quote-unquote safe pick at number one overall, I'd probably look no further than Christian McCaffrey just because – you know he's going to stay healthy, and you know he's going to produce. Um, now, whatever running back you take, he's basically going to be the engine to your team. All right, if you have the first pick, he's going to be the engine to your entire team. You're not going to have a pick for 19 picks later. So by the time you pick again, everybody else is going to have two players. You'll have the best, but everybody else is going to have two. That's kind of the downside of having the top pick in the snake. So what do you do position-wise? Best player available. That simple. If it's two running backs, it's two running backs, guys. Don't be worried. Remember, we did the we t- listen. We just did a mock draft. We waited to the seventh and eighth round to get a receiver. So don't worry about getting a receiver. Downs two and three. Get the best player available. If it's one receiver, one running back, fine. That's good. If it's a receiver and a tight end, okay, fine. If it's a tight end and a tight end, don't do that. But if it's a one receiver or one tight end. Two receivers is not too bad either just because you already picked a running back early. Or two running backs. I'm not against either of that. Just use those picks on the best available player. Flat out, period. Now, four and five. This is where you really look at your team and you kind of want to still use the best player available strategy, but it's really going to work against you because you got to start really filling out your roster in terms of your starting lineup. So by that point... I'd recommend that you have, you know, you're probably, you know, think about it now. You're probably best off going two running backs and a receiver. So using the previous, the round two, round three pick on a running back and a receiver, just so you can have insurance now so that you don't have to pick a receiver with this pick. Um, Definitely get a running back (laughs) just because you got to get your running back. So uh, by the end of this fifth round so you should have five players three of them should be a running back two and two of them should be a receiver tight end two receivers one receiver one tight end but at least three of those players in the first five rounds should be running backs your first overall pick should be a running back so basically from rounds two to five you should pick two running backs (laughs) and i know that's a lot to digest but guys you need running backs and I'm going to say this again, say it five, 15 more times. Make sure your running backs are set. If there's any position that you need set, you could play around with receivers. You could play around with quarterbacks. You could play around with tight ends. You can't play around with running backs. You just can't. So make sure you invest a lot of draft capital to have that position set. 
And then for six and seven, um, make sure your tight end is locked up by this point. I don't think Waller's going to be on the board, so you might have to look at a sleeper. If it's me, I'm going Jarwin, not this high, but that's what I'd be looking at. So if one of the top five tight ends is there, obviously take him that late. Or I just fill out the receivers. Um, there's still going to be solid receivers. There's still going to be guys like Calvin Ridley there. Uh, Sutton's going to be there. Jones Jr. is going to be there if he does something for you. He may even Tyler Lockett. You don't know this. So if you're at the top of the snake, don't panic. Uh, if there's one thing you should do, make sure. I'm going to write this down right now while I have it. Three out of the first five picks should be running backs and your first overall pick should be a running back so that should give you a guideline of how to build your team if you're at the top now if you're at the bottom of the snake meaning you have the very last pick in the draft but you have the very first pick in the next round so you have back-to-back picks for essentially the entire draft not bad you know why because you know that there's going to be two players sitting there that you're going to want, and you don't have to worry about anyone else getting them because you have back-to-back picks. So it's really easy to plan out who you're picking. Now, position-wise, how do you build your team? This year, in terms of names, I'm only going to say names for like the first round because that's really all you can project. Once you get in the fourth, fifth, second, even third round, it could be whack a doodle So... With the first round pick, you'd assume by pick 10 or pick 12, we'll just say 12-man league because that's the standard, uh, you'd assume Mike Thomas is going to be gone. You'd assume the top five running backs are going to be gone. So that's six players. Julio would probably be gone at that point as well. So you got to add him. That's seven. Uh, Derrick Henry's going to be gone. Uh, unless, Well, Henry's going to be gone. McCaffrey's going to be gone. Kamara's gone. Cook's gone. Zeke's gone. Barkley's gone. And... Uh, to be honest with you, Miles Sanders is probably going to be gone. So that's eight players. Nine is going to be Julio, 10, Michael Thomas. So you're basically on the clock with Clyde, maybe Kenyon Drake's there. He could be another name that's gone. Clyde, Drake, Travis Kelsey, Kittle, Devontae Adams. You don't know where to go. So number one. Same principle, one of those picks at 12 or 13, 10 or 11, whenever, they got to be a running back. So running backs to pick, at this point, hey, lock up Clyde. If he's still there, make one of those picks Clyde. Why not? I mean, he's a boomer bust, and with the draft not falling your way in terms of picks, you might want to take a chance on a guy that could boom and be better than the guys in the top five because if that happens, you give yourself a really good shot at winning the league. So maybe roll the dice on Clyde and then take Kenyon Drake. If that's how, if you could do that, yeah, you ain't doing too bad. Because your running backs are already set with the first two picks. You set up your running backs. I'd lock up another one still just for insurance. But at that point, you don't you could take a deep breath and not really worry about who your running backs are going forward in the draft. So ideal two running backs. You go running back receiver. So if Devontae Adams is still there, you want to pick him and Clyde, that's fine. You want to pick a tight end, uh, I'd say wait a little bit. I think 11 or 12 and 13 is too high for Kelsey. In the mock draft, I got Kelsey at 17, 18. I still, in retrospect, that was probably too high, but still, I thought it was a good pick at the time. I'd say use Kelsey as a bailout. Use him as a last choice because he'll definitely be there no matter what. He'll definitely be there. Nobody's going to pick Kelsey in the first round, so you don't have to worry about that. Uh, Use him as your bailout, but ideally two running backs, or running back, Devontae Adams. That's what you should do round one, round two. So now you want to move down the list. Uh, let's get into round four, or excuse me, round three, round four. So now you have your two running backs, or your running back and your receiver. Make sure, how I said, the last two picks, right? One of those picks should be a running back. Now one of these picks should be a receiver. Okay, whether it be a round three or round four, one of those picks should be a receiver. So if you want to go by that point, maybe a Thielen and a Mostert or a Thielen and a James Conner. So you could get three running backs and a receiver. 
two running backs, two wide receivers, uh, two running backs, a receiver, and a tight end. That's essential. But the first, this is a good, this is a good rule. The first four picks, two should be running backs. So if you're in the first, if so if you're, sum this up. If you have the first overall pick in the draft, three of your first five picks should be running backs. And if you have the bottom of the snake, two of your first four picks should be running backs. Okay? So whether you're going in two running backs, two receivers, or two running backs, receiver, tight end, or three running backs, one receiver, you're doing fine. And by that point, five and six, you can honestly just do filling out your roster. Pick a tight end. If you're doing by then, pick a tight end. Round five, if, if Waller's still there, scoop him up immediately because uh, that's a 1,000-yard tight end, in my opinion. He could be your starter throughout the entire season. And then you could pick that six-round pick on either a Mostert. You could pick it on a Montgomery. Uh, Connor, if he's still there, I doubt he will by that point uh, just because, again, running backs are scarce. But two of your first four picks in the bottom of the snake should be a running back. And if you could do your first two like a Clyde and Kenyon, it gives you a lot of flexibility because then you could basically not only wait on a receiver, but you could pick a tight end if you want to and not go, oh, i got to still get a running back. You don't want to be that. You could say, okay, i got to still get a tight end. i still got to get a receiver. But, man, you do not want to say, oh, man, i got to still get a running back. And when you're in round four, round five, you want to have that locked up and set up. So those are some strategies to look at, guys. Bottom principles, again, Three of the first five picks should be running back. If you're in the top of a snake, two of the first four picks should be running back for the bottom of a snake. That's the general principles for how to build your team if you're in the end of a snake. Don't panic. It's not the worst thing in the world. It's happened to me before. I've just, you know, find a way. Use your list. You can bail yourself out, guys. All right. Coming up. Uh, in the final segment, we're going to get into top 10 running backs. I've said running back like 15, not 15, that's low, like maybe 1,500 times already this show. I better, why not give you my top 10 rankings of the running backs so you could build your horizontal chart. We gave out quarterbacks last podcast. Running backs are coming right up after the break. Check out the show built around the women of MMA. From the UFC to the extreme cage fighting, we got the fights covered. Listen. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Women's MMA Podcast. The latest news of upcoming fights, discussions of previous matches. Join us as we talk to and about the biggest names in women's mixed martial arts, past, present, and future. When it's the women's fight game, you know where to listen to. The Golden State Media Concepts Women's MMA Podcast. back to the GSMC Fantasy Football Podcast, we are going to get into top 10 running backs. Now, this is my favorite position to break down. It's the engineer team, and you better have at least one of these 10 guys on your team this season. So it's, it's possible to have at least one of these 10 guys on your team. If you have two of these guys on your team, you got a good shot of winning your league. But if you got one, you're in good shape. So Let's not waste any time. Let's get right into the top 10 with number 10 being Nick Chubb. And if I'm honest with you, if Kareem Hunt weren't there, Nick Chubb might even be higher on the list. Uh, for me, last year, Nick Chubb was going to be my first round pick no matter what. And he got picked even earlier than I expected. Somebody beat me to the punch with him. But with that pick, I traded out. I remember if you listened last segment, I told you about the draft trade story. My first round well, my first pick was pick 17 overall because I got rid of my fourth overall pick. So this is how the snake works. My first pick would have been four, then 17, then 20-something. You get the point. So 
17 in my pick. I locked in. I'm like, all right, I'm going Nick Chubb here no matter what. He got picked at like 12. I'm like, Duh. And the reason I liked him so much is, man, Kareem Hunt wasn't even there yet. So I'm like, man, this guy's second year. He's going to be running wherever he wants to. This is his offense, his head coach. This is going to be awesome. Boom. It, it totally worked out for him. Once they gave him the rock, he was going off. The Patriots couldn't even stop him. That's how good he was. And it really was going. I thought he was just going to keep going and going and lead the NFL in rushing. But it came to a steady halt once Kareem got there. And that's why he's going to stay down at 10 is because if Kevin Stefanski likes Kareem Hunt, he's going to play him. He doesn't care about Nick Chubb. And I explained this last podcast. He didn't draft Nick Chubb. So the last GM and head coach that were there, they preferred Nick Chubb because they used a second-round pick over on him over Kareem Hunt. Now the Satan go for Kareem Hunt. They don't care about him either. But, hey, at least this coaching staff is going to give him a clean slate. So it could be a committee, if I'm honest with you. He did a little, Stefanski did a little bit of that in Minnesota with Alexander Madison. But Nick Chubb is just an absolute workhorse and a great running back to have on your team, and I hope he's on mine. So he'll stay at number 10. Number nine, this is the man that's easily, this is the player that's received the most hype throughout the entire draft process. And he's just, his name has moved higher up the boards faster than anyone in the world. And I think you guys know who I'm talking about. I'm talking about Clyde Edwards Hilaire. Now, I was listening to my good buddy, Fantasy Football Counselor. Please check him out on Instagram, guys, if you haven't yet. And he's telling me, you know, hold up on the Edwards Hilaire. Hold up on him. I don't like him. I'm like, why? He's like, well, doesn't pass protect. I'm like, <laughs> you don't get points for pass protection in fantasy. He goes, well, he ain't going to be on the field on third down if he can't pass protect. I'm like, okay, that's a good point. <laughs> so that's something you have to worry about, guys. A 5'7 running back is not going to be something Patrick Mahomes is going to want in there on third down if a blitz is coming off the edge. Now, that's not saying he's too little to get run over, but as a rookie, that could definitely happen. Could he bulk up? Could he adjust? Could he handle it? I think so. If he does, he's not coming off the field. So that's something you got to look out for. But even so, I really, really have a hard time saying pass protection is going to be the thing that's going to stop him just due to the fact that, man, he was such a good player in college. And that Pat Mahomes actually vouched for the Chiefs to draft him. Um... I think that's something a lot of you guys know. But Pat Mahomes wanted Brett Veach to draft Clyde edwards Larry. He loved his receiving game. I think Andy Reid has a whole passing package to Clyde that teams are just going to, oh, my God, they're going to have to buckle up for that while they hit Tyreek Hill running 50 yards downfield. I think the ground game is going to be efficient with him. I, he's just too shifty. I mean, I love this kid. I think in PPR he's an outstanding player with the receiving that he can do in that offense. I think he's just gonna, the ceiling is through the roof. And he should be higher on the list, but due to being a rookie and due to being unproven, it's hard to put him over some of these guys. So we'll leave him at nine for now. But this is a total boom or bust prospect because if he booms, he could be the number one fantasy player, even though that's crazy to say. So Clyde edwards helaire number nine, moving on up to number eight, Miles Sanders. Now, Miles Sanders was someone who was highly touted by the Eagles, second-round pick on him. Went to the same school Saquon did. Was actually buddies with Saquon. Saquon showed him a lot of things, you know, with Miles Sanders. I think he was a walk-on. And he really improved his game under Saquon. So he's really looking to take this next step and go to the next level and be just like Saquon this year. All right? And Philly thinks it's going to happen. Why? They released Jordan Howard. and they, Or, excuse me, they didn't re-sign him. He's gone, and they didn't even bother drafting a running back. So they're putting all their chips in on Sanders. Now, Doug Peterson's offense, a lot of him, a lot of people are going to say, oh, it's a passing offense. You got Carson Wentz, you got all these receivers they drafted, Deshaun Jackson, this and that. Well, did you know that the year the Eagles won the Super Bowl, they had the fourth best rushing offense in the league? So that's not just a passing offense, guys. They will run the football. And according to PFF, I pulled up a stat, Miles Sanders was actually eighth in touches in the second half of 2019. So once the Eagles started playing him full time, he was second in touch. I mean, not second. He was eighth in touches. So this is someone who, towards the end of the year, he really came on. And that's a trend you should look at, guys. If coaches are playing these guys toward the end of the year, that means they beat out the incumbent starter and they're really looking towards them in the future. 
Uh, David Johnson's a good example of this. Once they put him in in 2015, he was beasting. They couldn't stop him. 2016, he led the NFL in all-purpose yards. So this could be the same for Miles Sanders. Uh, the offensive line is a little banged up and old, so I'd, I have my questions about that. But, man, he was receiving so productive. Rushing, he was even he had 100-yard games and a committee. I mean, this is someone who can definitely be a very good running back and player for the Eagles and have at least 1,500 all-purpose yards. He killed me. He was one of the players that killed me in my playoffs. He had 30 points against me. And shout-out to Poppy for picking him up because, my God, he absolutely tore me up. I think he's going to be a great player this year. So we'll leave him at number eight. Number seven, Derrick Henry. Now, Derrick Henry in standard should be three or two, but we're going to put him at seven because this is a PPR rankings. Just due to the fact that, number one, the workload was excessive last year. I mean, he had a workload that was just through the roof. He got hurt towards the end of the year and just kept bowling through linebacker. It was ridiculous. Shout out to Derrick Henry. <clears throat> I mean, I was totally right about him last year. This year, I don't know if he repeats. He's definitely still going to be a workhorse. I think the Titans finally figured that out, that they have to feed him 200, 300 times a year for him to keep pulling and bowling because he's just going to wear on teams towards the end of the year, and he'll come up when you need him most. So he's still a top 10 running back no matter what. But the receiving, he's not a true receiver in terms of running back. He had a 75-yard touchdown week one on a on a screen. I remember that, but that was versus Cleveland. So does that really count? Um Aside from that, he wasn't really a great receiver, but the guy is a workhorse, and workhorse running backs go early. And with Derrick Henry, <laughs> I mean, he might be the best. Just pure power back. I mean, he is a t he's the definition of a, what you want in a workhorse. I mean, the guy, is, he looks even bigger than a horse itself. So definitely want a player like that on your team. And if he's still there at 9, 10, if you guys are on the clock, scoop him up immediately. He'll stay at number seven. Number six, Kenyon Drake. Now, I've been moving Drake up a lot through this list, and this is just a player that I think, uh, I just think if he gets the ball, he's going to be productive. I mean, he's another player just like Miles Sanders. He came on strong the second half of the year. I know they used Chase Edmonds, but, man, when they put him in the game, what he was doing was unparalleled to any running back that Arizona's had since David Johnson in 2016. And they traded away David Johnson himself. So what does that say? If Cliff, I mean, I know they didn't draft David Johnson, but the general manager who drafted him is still there. And he traded him away knowing that, hey, Kenyon Drake, we might have something with this guy. And considering his talent, he, I mean, he has talent. There's no doubt about that. You don't go to Alabama on a scholarship without talent and play in that team. You don't get drafted and, you know, have productive seasons on the bench and stick around for that long if you're not talented. This guy has talent. They just have to play him. That's the only concern with Drake. I mean, he, Aaron Jones was similar. That's why I think he, he's in the similar boat as Aaron Jones was last year. Aaron Jones was a player I loved last year. I'm like, oh, my God. I mean, that's why I drafted him. I'm like, if they just play this guy, he's going to be great. What do they know? They played him. He had 19 touchdowns. I would compare Drake to him. You know, new offense, similar to what they had in Green Bay. You know, Cliff is just looking for playmakers, and I think he's going to start him and start him a lot once he sees what he can do. And he already did last year, so look out for Kenyon Drake. Perfect late round one option. Now let's get into the top five, the elite. Uh, for this list, I put Barkley at five. Uh, again, he definitely has the upside of being number one. But with Saquon, you want him. I'm going to put him a little bit lower just due to the fact, you know, his offensive line isn't there yet. They don't really have a lot of weapons around him yet. So he could he could be inefficient, if that's even possible. It's hard. I mean, it's hard to say inefficient and Saquon in the same sentence. I get it. But just comparing him to the other situations these four guys have ahead of him, he has it the worst. So that's why I'm just going to put him at five for now. Number four, I'm going to put Zeke. Uh, Zeke, the only problem with him is he might not get the ball enough to be the number one overall back. Is he quality? Yeah, because when he was drafted, he led the league in rushing. A lot of people forget that. But he led the league in rushing as a rookie guy, so he could easily be a number one back. The thing that was interesting, though, about Zeke is he said he was working a lot on his receiving. So I wonder if McCarthy is really going to come in and see what he could do as a receiver and implement him. Because if that's the case, he might be the best running back in the draft. 
just do the, I mean, he, he can, he can catch the ball better than some of these receivers. Believe it or not, he's had big time receiving plays on screens. I don't know if you guys remember the Lions game when Dak threw it over his shoulder, he caught it. I mean, he is a big time player that just impacts the game unlike any other running back I've seen, aside from maybe Saquon Barkley. But the only problem with him is, man, those receivers, Dak on the prove it year, they're definitely going to want to air it out too. So it's going to be a balance, but still an elite player with an elite talent around him. Uh, number three, we're going to put Dalvin Cook. Uh, Dalvin, the only problem with him is injuries. Uh, well, you saw Dalvin last year. <laughs> I mean, they used the heck out of him. And he was really good. I mean, Dalvin's talent is no question. It's all about his health. And if he stays healthy, he's easily a third best running back. Um, you know, health is a tricky thing to predict. So I probably wouldn't draft Cook number one just due to that, but there's not going to be very far where I go, okay, I can't pass on Dalvin Cook. I mean, he, he might be the best, too. I mean, that's why all these guys are in the top five. They could be the best in their very own conversation, but some of them just have situations they can't control. And Dalvin Cook is one of them. He can't really control that injury situation. And if he gets hurt, he's, you know, it's not going to do anything for you guys. So that's the only thing I'd be cautious about. Aside from that, great player, great situation around him. They'll use him fine. Finish up the list. Number two. Alvin Kamara. Kamara for PPR is outstanding. He's the, one of the best receiving, if not the best receiving back in the league. He had 800 yards receiving last year, guys, or two years ago now, because last year he was hurt. But two years ago, he had uh, 800 receiving yards. So when you combine 800 receiving yards with 1,000 rushing, guys, that's like a top three player in fantasy football. As a top three player, because that's over, that's almost 2,000 all purpose. That's probably like 1,500 touchdowns all purpose. That's a top three player. So, no surprise. Alvin Kamara, too. By the way, great situation around him. Hall of Fame quarterback, great head coach, good offensive line. I mean, what more can you ask for? He just needs to stay healthy, too, and he'll be fine. Number one, Christian McCaffrey. This is just respect for what he did last year. He could have been the MVP, um, but we're going to put him in number one just because, again, I called him the safe pick. He's the man. Uh, he should be on the cover of Madden, to be honest with you, with the season he had last year. But what he did last year makes him the number one pick in a lot of drafts this year. Just to, I mean, I haven't seen that since, like, Chris Johnson. I mean, he was on a ridiculous pace last year. And I know he got paid, so he might have a decline. I mean, he, he probably will have a decline numerically, just because those numbers are almost impossible to replicate. But... I mean, I could definitely, if he gets 2,000 all purpose, would I be surprised? Not one bit. So that's the list. Just to recap it real quick 10 Nick Chubb, 9 Nick Clyde, 8 Miles Sanders, 7 Derrick Henry, 6 Kenyon Drake, 5 Saquon Barkley, 4 Zeke Elliott, 3 Dalvin Cook, 2 Alvin Kamara, 1 Christian McCaffrey. That is your top 10 running backs, guys. That's all I have for today. Please go over to Twitter, follow GSMC underscore ff football you can see my top 100 there where i get more extensive with the list uh shout out my boy ej for posting that on this blog so he can really show you guys it's all for free <laughs> you don't gotta pay to see you guys just head over to twitter i retweeted the links there and follow the page also please and i encourage you please put a review in for this podcast all right whether it be a message on twitter a comment a like uh i don't care please Please provide feedback for the podcast. We really appreciate it. It really helps us learn what we need to do to get better. And again, like I say with fantasy, you're always trying to get better because if you're not getting better, you're going backwards. But thank you for listening to the GSMC Fantasy Football Podcast brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. Follow the socials, GSMC underscore fantasy football. Thank you, everybody. I'm out. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Fantasy Football Podcast, part of the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Just type in GSMC to find all the shows from the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network from movies to music from sports to entertainment and even weird news you can also follow us on twitter and on facebook thank you and we hope you have enjoyed today's program